Hey everyone, welcome to Coder's Corner. My name's Jeff. And I'm Paul. We are starting this show with the intent of putting a spotlight on community members for Cisco. It's such a great idea of spotlighting our community members and the great work they do. Our community is full of so really smart people and they're doing amazing things. And I'm really happy that we have this opportunity to share the things that they're doing. And Paul, for this first recording, what I'm super curious about is where where are we primarily looking for uh, the content that people are putting out there? Like, where are community members talking primarily? Where are they putting their code submissions? Things like that. Yeah, well, we have a, a lots of people talking about pretty much all the APIs that Cisco uh, provides for its customers. Um, networking and collaboration seem to be the most popular spaces, uh, and that's what we're talking about today. I think this idea of spotlighting our community members and the great work they do is, is awesome. Uh, our community is full of really smart people doing amazing things. And I'm super happy to have this opportunity to help them share their, their stuff that they're doing. One of the areas where people can share is the Cisco developer community, which is at cs.co slash developer dash community. It's uh, near and dear to my heart, of course. Uh, we get about 50,000 unique visitors per month. Uh, we talk about, we have new content there. We have discussions. We talk about all of Cisco's APIs, really, we have mostly collaboration and networking is where it's most popular, but we have places for everyone to talk about uh, lots of different stuff there. That's awesome, man. Right on. And then the other one I wanted to call out for everybody is um, you can also submit any code that you want to talk with other community members about and share that with other people as you're working on it at uh, developer.cisco.com slash code exchange. Code exchange is our sort of unified place where we have all kinds of like code samples that are meant as simple tools to help you up to up to and including like full blown automation scenarios. So real both really, really good resources. Um, for this first episode, we just wanted to kind of talk a bit about uh, what those two places were. So if you are interested in maybe being on the show in the future or, you know, chatting with others, which is more important than being on the show, chatting with others who are like-minded, like our guests today, doing really cool things with technology. And when you talk with them, you know, not just for support, but also not, or not just for like technical support, but if you really want to meet other people and learn from them and help, uh, help teach others too, well, the, the, the link that we have up on the screen now that Paul mentioned is a really good place to go and just get involved with those people and learn more. And then, yeah, if you want to share more about your code, go to our code exchange. It's really cool. Uh, this week, we're kicking off our series with a look at some contact center customizations. You know, collaboration APIs were among the first APIs that Cisco released, and the original Cisco phones were is where the Cisco's developer program started. So this is all very uh, you know, historical and also very current. So there's you know, it's a nice uh, cross section there. You know, Contact Center has been one of the most popular areas of the developer collaboration community as well. Last month, it was the top forum for all the developer collaboration areas with over 4,500 unique visitors. And uh, people have a lot of questions about ECCX and customizing Finesse. Uh, it's a, you know, Finesse looks a little bit more like app development than some of our infrastructure stuff. So it's a little, you know, the audience is a little different there. So it's, it's really exciting. I'd like to introduce uh, David Maceus. David is a consultant specializing in Contact Center, and he's been a champion in our community. I remember you getting on some of the Developer Spotlight Awards early on, but then you became a Cisco Community VIP, and you've been such a great resource in our Contact Center community. Yeah, David, welcome yeah. to the show. No, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Paul. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah, you know, it, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you said that the Collaboration API is one of the oldest. I, uh, I've been doing this almost for 20 years, and when I Stop to think about it. Um, yeah, that's why my uh, my wrist and my knee hurts. Now now <laughs> I know why that is. <laughs> it's really cool to have you. And you know, for my hope with this show and having you on is to help people see here's something you can do. This is something tangible that will actually solve a problem either for work or for fun or whatever it happens to be and give somebody out there watching this going, oh, okay, I didn't know I could do something like that. All right, let me go dig into that a little bit. So talk us through a bit about what got you here? What? Why did you develop the thing that you're going to talk about today? What inspired you to get to this point? And just anything you really want to share about what led you up to that? Yeah, no. Uh, so, you know, I think one of the biggest things, first and foremost, I always say this, I do not consider myself a developer. Hopefully that resonates with uh, the most people out there, right? I, I know enough to be dangerous and I'm a really good uh, searcher of the web and I understand how uh, Stack Overflow works, where half of my code probably comes from. Uh, but one of the biggest things for me, right, is that if there is a motion that you're going through that's very repetitive in nature, there's probably an opportunity there for, for automation. 
And the other thing for me is don't swallow, you know, don't don't swallow the whale in one bite, right? You got to start really, really small. Um, a lot of the things that I have built and post out there generally are, you know, small Python skill uh, scripts, as maybe small shell scripts that uh, that you know, parse some data, go out and get some information from different APIs or from a database, and present it in a different way that allows you to then move on to the next task. So I I, I think you know the biggest thing for people like um, that you talked about is um, is just pick something that um, you feel could be optimize or automate it, um, make sure that it's small, and then from there, iterate, right? And and don't don't try to write like the next Windows or a browser, right? Try to small uh, start very, very small. Um, that way, you know, you 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 have a, a very defined start point, a very defined end point, and you can build upon the, the success that you'll eventually have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, nice. you know, on that note, there's actually two things I wanted to showcase. Um, well, um, in my screen is one of the things that I built for one customer, um, and this was a team effort, just not me, is a, a prompt manager as well as our sub operations in uh, uh, routing uh, front end. What this is, is built in AWS, and it's uh, for a contact center enterprise customer, UCC customer, and they wanted to give their end users the ability to make routing decisions and prompting changes on the fly without them actually having admin access to the scripting and potentially uh, cause a bigger issue. Uh, for this particular customer, they're in an area that's very prone to, to hurricanes. And so they need the ability to make changes from anywhere, really anywhere in the world uh, and make them uh, as quickly as possible. So what we built is the ability for them to make uh, uh, record a prompt or type out a prompt. They're able to listen to it to make sure that it sounds correctly. And then they're able to deploy it. And then, so this is all cloud-based um, and their, um, their UCC system is on-premises. So what we didn't have on-premises is we have a script that runs every three minutes that goes out to the cloud and says, hey, do I have any new prompts that I need to, that I need to deploy? If so, it brings them in, deploys them to all the media servers. And then the next time that a call comes in, they're gonna hear that new prompting. Um, additionally, we also have the ability to control hours of operations, um, holidays, and then we also have the ability for them to very quickly uh, change routing. So this is more for emergencies. Like if all of a sudden, hey, we need to shut down a specific department immediately because uh, the building caught on fire or maybe something not so drastic. It's David's birthday and we're all going to have to celebrate for because uh, we're going to have cake for the next 30 minutes. They can come in, uh, make a change and then hit submit and again within three minutes that change will be will be done and that uh, removes the uh, it from the middle of of these kind of changes right this is something very, very simple very confined um and really puts uh, puts the power of this on the business to make their own decisions anytime anytime that they want very cool uh so it sounds like you know we have this uh, issue with, with disaster recovery and things like that. It seems like a very easy way to people for them to change their prompts and things like that uh, without having to mess around with the code, which is great. Yeah, really, it, it really just extrapolates the, the the heavy scripting that might be with in your in your ICM scripting or or in your IVR, and it just provides a interface that's very easy to use very you know very few options not a lot of uh not a lot of way to get in trouble with uh, with this ui so yeah exactly that's that's exactly what we're going for here is that a i'm very curious um david is that a you know being someone who didn't never really worked in the contact center space or work in you know uh in telephony or voip ever like i spent most of my my career before i came to cisco in like classic network operations, so not necessarily on the voice or the telephony side. My my question for you really is, um, what what sort of challenge are you, re is someone really getting overcome? Like, is it being overcome with this? Like, how much time is this really saving for somebody? And I'm not, this is not meant to be a challenge for you, but more of like, I, I don't understand, you know, what, what, what you just automated away. Like how, what kind of burden did you just automate away for somebody? Cause like, I want to be more, I want to be really mind blown. And I love what you built. It looks, it looks great. And it's a very simple way for someone clearly to take, I'm guessing very complicated actions, but I'm really curious how complicated are those actions that you just automated for them? So it depends. So without, we don't even have to talk about the actual change that needs to happen. Oftentimes we need to talk about the process to make to request a change, 
have the change be validated and then be performed, right? Uh, generally, these kind of changes where you want to do a, a prompt change or a routing change, you have to open a ticket with all of IT. IT then needs to route it to the, the telecom team or the contact center team. There needs to be a reviewer, somebody assigned to it. There might need to be some back and forth about, oh, what do you need? Or, or what exactly is the verbiage? Oh, you made a misspell here, things like that. Um, so all of that could potentially, let's just say it's a very efficient organization. It might take three hours. It doesn't take three hours. You know, the whole process generally takes a couple of days. So what we've done is we first and foremost removed IT from the operations or and made that process simplified significantly. The other thing is generally, Generally, the contact center is locked away behind multiple layers of VPN and security. This portal, this portal is still uh, secure with, with uh, username and password, but it's available anywhere at any time, right? So if somebody needs to run out of their house because they're evacuating because a hurricane's coming, somebody can jump in on their iPad, on their laptop, or on their mobile phone, log in, and make the appropriate changes, and within three minutes, it'll be, it'll be done. So the... Um, the savings could be very small depending on the process of the organization, but in the long run, right, removing IT, removing having to open a ticket and the back and forth of having to confirm what the prompt needs to do and confirm that it's been done correctly, this just makes it something that could be, that could potentially take hours, maybe take a couple of minutes at most. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, you know, I was, I think my mind was thinking that, you know, there's some other magic that's going on, but realistically, you just described every single situation that's ever happened to me when in network operations were like, like you just, you need to have this one thing done, but it's, it's, that's overseen by another team. You got to put a request in and there's just procedural things that are in the way. And it's not that those procedural things inherently are bad, but they create friction. And this right. not only does that create friction, but they're also, as you said, these are repetitive things that a, a person doesn't individual person doesn't add value to or unique value to in doing making a single a single change they can do but there's no inherent value in a person doing that if you can simplify that by give them give this that person does it's like look i don't have to be part of a ticket queue to do that anymore that can be taken care of over here we put all the controls in place no problem you're all set to go and i can move as an operator i can move back into doing things that are much more meaningful for the day-to-day -day work Exactly. And the other thing, right, is just um, giving the control and power to the end users who are the ones who actually live with it, right? What the prompt says, it doesn't matter to IT or to the telecom team. It matters to the business owner. So have them have ownership and control over it. Very cool. So the other thing I, I wanted to show, and this is more of a, this is more something that I just created because I wanted to learn how to write a, a browser extension. And I wrote it for Chrome and for Firefox. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, it's free if you, if, you, if you search for it on the, on the uh, browser store or extension stores for like uh, Finesse Companion, you'll be able to find it there. Or you can go to my, uh, this website, companion.ccshift.com. It's a website that I built to just to, um, uh, where I thought about just adding little tools at, that I create and that are uh, available to uh, to the world. Um, this little extension, it's this little F here for finesse that's in blue. If you click on it, it immediately takes you to your finesse URL. So you don't have to type it in. You then are able to, you know, you log in. And the other cool things that it does, it tells you what state you're in without having to look at your um, at your finesse desktop. You know, oftentimes agents have a lot of different websites open and the the finesse uh, my the extension allows for a one click to just get immediately back to that uh, to that to that tab. And again, right, it tells you the your your state without having to actually be on that specific tab. The other thing that it does, um, if you've been, it has an alarm or a notification that if you've been not ready, like, let's say you walk away from your desk and a call comes in, you didn't answer it, the system automatically sets you to not ready, uh, but you might come back to your desk and not realize it. It also sends you a notification and says, hey, you've been away from, you've been in not ready state for an extended period of time. How about you go, uh, how about you go back to ready? Or just making you aware of that so it kind of brings that information forward to the agent um uh, to just to make them aware that, hey something might have happened while you stepped away so you know this is very very simple um it makes my life a little bit better when i'm doing testing um 
I don't, I've never really publicized. This is the first time that I actually talk about it in public. Um, but it, you know, people organically have found it. It, used, it has around 200 uh, users daily or so. Uh, I know I've had some uh, past customers who um, I've deployed it for them in uh, in a slightly uh, different way, um, without any uh, without any tracking, because uh, the they have some Google Analytics behind it to so just tells me how many people are using it, what kind of browser they're using, things like that, but never anything specific to their spe to their contact center or their customers. So again, this was just something I wanted to learn how to build a an extension, a, a browser extension, and I'm a contact center person, so I built a browser extension that helps my job and some of my customers uh, do their job slightly easier, slightly mm -hmm. better. Oh, yeah. That seems very helpful for for contact center agents who are out there trying to, you know, help help people's problems. Yeah, like you said, if they step away for a moment, this kind of brings them back to where they need to be. That seems yeah. very helpful. Yeah, yeah, very simple too. And and remember, right, the big thing too here that they agents generally have eighteen different tabs, and having that constant visualize uh, icon there just helps them. Like, okay, I'm still in ready state. I'm still good to go. I can continue doing whatever it is that I need to do and not go back and, and look at my finesse screen to take another call or to change my state. So it's just a couple of seconds that you're going to save, but the agents, you know, getting hundreds and hundreds of calls, those little bit of seconds that you save really amount to a lot of time being saved overall. Yeah, it makes such a huge difference in a contact center where time, it's it's a... It's a worn out, I think, worn out aphorism, I think, for the most part, but time is literally money in a contact center. Like the, the efficiency of your contact, contact center agents is what makes you makes or breaks the success of your contact center. I said that Absolutely. way too many times. <laughs> it's, and I, you know, for me at least, um, the, the more like existential way that I view what you built here is that this is what you, you know, we can oversimplify a little bit and call it just simple automation, but it's not that. This is that whole idea of like the art of what's possible, making it real. Like there are so many things you can do within standard interfaces within any Cisco product as an example and others too. Yet with things like the APIs or SDKs in some places, you can, I don't even want to call it extensibility. You can just, you can, you have the control to make it do whatever you need it to do to work for your environment. And this is a really, I love it. This is a fantastic example of how to solve for oftentimes seemingly simple problems, but they get those simple problems add up. They really do. And if you can create efficiencies in people's workflows, my gosh, you become a hero almost overnight. Yeah. And, and again, right. It's about starting small. Like this, could this, could, could I have replaced all the finesse in a Chrome extension possibly, but that wasn't what I was after. Right. I wanted to just mm -hmm. learn, have an opportunity to learn and solve something for me where I could, Every time I go to finesse, I have to type in the URL, go to my favorites. Mm -hmm. This, I have an extension, one click, I'm in. It just saves me saves me a couple of seconds and I'm finesse, pro I'm in finesse probably once a day. So you're saving me a couple of seconds every day. Um, I can use that time to do something else. Would you mind uh, letting us know where, letting the audience know where they can find any of these tools? Yeah, so uh, you can reach out to me directly. My my website is squero.com and there's ways to contact me there. Um, the the finesse uh, or sorry the finesse and Chrome extension is in companion.ccshift.com. You can also just search for uh, finesse companion on the Chrome store or the Firefox uh, extension store. I'm also I'm very 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 uh, active on social media, LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can find me there at d macias. Um, and I'm always happy to engage with people. I am very, very much uh, somebody who likes to share my knowledge um, because I, it's because I often take knowledge from other people that are doing the same thing and sharing. So, you know, always happy to have a conversation and help in any way that I can. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. And also looking forward awesome. to seeing you back on the communities since you're super active there as well. Thank, yeah, looking forward to it also. Right on. David, thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great one, guys. And Paul, it, this was fantastic. I mean, our first first episode down, really great guest and having David here and getting people to, giving the chance for people to see not just, you know, something that can simplify their day-to-day -day work, but also hopefully some motivation to go build a thing that they want to build. Yeah, and share it with everyone else. It's great. I, I really, I, I think this is a, a great situation where we can have a, people share things with us and share it with the world as well. I, I hope to get more developers uh, that are interested in this 
So uh, for our community members out there, please let us know what you're doing by posting in the community or sharing your code at Code Exchange. And we'd love to have you on our show. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next Coder's Corner.